Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Smack Mitchell with the Willie Comic Book Roundup. We've got a decently sized haul this week, so let's get started. Kicking things off, we've got Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, number five, wrapping up the miniseries. Where we left off, Brian Braddock, Captain Avalon, was uh, in a pocket dimension of his brother Jamie's cre creation, dealing with uh, the Fury, who'd been uh, painted to be Morgan Le Fay's Captain Britain. And uh, Strike had assembled at uh, Braddock Manor to discuss plans for dealing with uh, Morgan Le Fay. Um, the issue begins with Betsy bringing uh, Faisal Hussein in to speak with uh, Strike. She is apparently the bearer of Excalibur. <coughs> But um, Betsy explains that that is something that's going that is something that will come in handy deal in dealing with uh, Morgan. Um, as they discuss the plan, we actually see the plan going off, breaking into a greenhouse that now exists on the property, and uh, infiltrating the building and the property and so on and so forth. Uh, Captain Avalon uh, beats the holy hell out of uh, the Fury, but is stopped by Ascani. Basically, you know, we need it's needed for, for the second timeline. And uh, she'll be, but. Rachel is going to be escorted in the evening's events by Brian and, Me and Megan, which ca which causes Megan to say, just like old times. Um, inside Morgan's estate, uh, the members of Strike deal with the various uh, Kamenakaba cultists who are present, um, including a sealing of Light's Well Ring from one of them. Uh, Betsy goes into attack, but the Morgan's personal guards are protected from uh, her telepathy. Meanwhile, um, Ascani, Captain Avalon, and Megan deliver the uh, smashed up uh, Fury to. Uh, The, to Inferi, the, the Everforge, and point out that Morgan Le Fay promised the Furies war, and, well, she hasn't delivered that. As Doombots are uh, unleashed, Betsy turns the tables on Morgan and Faisa, utilizing Excalibur, Um, kind of sort of cleanses Morgan, forgiving with uh, Excalibur self forgiving her. And it seems that for the moment, problems with uh, Morgan have been abated. And uh, the series ends with. Uh, Rachel and Betsy heading off for Captain Britain Corps business. That's a good miniseries. Um, works well with it, with what's been going on in the X books, uh, especially with the the fact that the, book, the X Men books are hurtling towards the fall of X, which is not going to be pretty. So, kind of sad to see it go. Uh, it, was a, it was a fun book. Um, also, I liked the brought it kind of. Canonized in the multiverse, the uh, recent Captain Carter uh, miniseries. But anyway, moving on to our next book, we've got New Mutants Lethal Legion, number four. Where we left off, the New Mutants had absconded with a weird engine from uh, uh, Count Nefaria's home, and were being chased down by his new Lethal Legion. 
including the recently hired Moonso. Um, New Mutant, their car gets totaled, but uh, New Mutants deal with the Lethal Legion. In part due to uh, the Karma and uh, Cerebella and their telepathy. Um, turns out that one of the creatures uh, whose head was mounted on uh, on the wall in um, the of the state was a similar creature to the one that uh, Morgan and Wolfsbane found in New York sewers. We also want to add for a sewer safari testimonials from uh, Count Neferia, Ulysses Claw and Craven the Hunter. Craven the Hunter says, meh. Um, the New Mutants hide out in a uh, what appears to be a, a factory soon to become uh, luxury housing. Uh, the telepaths are stopped by uh, Karma and Cerebella are temporarily stopped by Nefaria, but deal with, but they managed to take him down themselves. Um, Morgan and Escapade discuss their issues. And we find out that apparently Moonstone wanted to be a singer when she was young, but her mother and sister she went to med school instead. Though, uh, it is noted that Moose actually does have a rather nice singing voice. Um, when Moonstone is uh, about to kill um, Morgan, however, Escapade steals her powers, which apparently means he's basically stealing the Moonstones from her, which puts her close to death. Mirage attempts to escape with the weird engine, but uh, Lethal Legion ended up retrieving it and uh, destroying the building that the New Mutants have been hiding out in, though they survive, with a plan to get the weird engine back and, well, once again, kick uh, Nefarious' ass. There's also a, uh, oh, a podcast uh, excerpt about how, why Count Nefaria is... Uh, So afraid of getting old. Apparently, it's about fight he had, fight that he was in with the wizard, in which wizard basically said it doesn't matter what you do because you're over fifty. The idea basically being that you know you're past your prime. Go ahead, take over the world. You'll be dead in twenty or thirty years, and you'll be consigned to history books. And kids will use chat GPT chat to write plausible, poorly sourced essays about you. But uh, yeah. So ever since then, Nefarious has been wanting to, you know, keep himself from getting old, older. And that is where the issue ends. We have one more issue left on uh, Lethal Legion. That's not we got next month. Uh, overall, this has been a fun series, and this issue continues, you know, that, uh, the fun. And I like the fact that I'm glad everyone, all the characters have now come together. As much as I enjoyed, kind of, you know, you have the Wolfsbane Morgan story, you have uh, uh, Karma and Mirage, and you've got uh, Cerebella, Scout, and uh, Escapade. I like that the, the three stories have all now come together. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got X Force number 41, continuing Ghost Calendars. Where we left off, Quentin Quire had returned much older, not much more cranky, but just as cranky as one would expect from old, from old man Quentin Quire, and uh, brought a, a new X-Force line up into the future. Well, not way not so much, but a future that's ruled by Beast, who has basically made himself into God of Mutants. So we see Beast um, setting up uh,
clone clone tanks for himself throughout uh, his org locations. Uh, we've got one of the pyramids of Giza, the Colosseum of Rome, the Great Wall of China, uh, Teotihuacan, Stonehenge. But uh, thousands of years later, uh, Quentin brings X Force uh, somewhere place safe. Somewhat, though. Uh, Beast has apparently made hybrids of himself and, and Krakoa, but. Uh, Energy jellyfish save the X-Force and bring them to Staten Island, where they meet with Staten Island's current ruler, Deadpool. Which, fun fact, not the first time Deadpool has been the ruler of Staten Island. But, uh... More of the hybrids attack, and uh, Quentin manages to uh, save them off. Domino and uh, Apoc uh, Colossus discuss what things. The Colossus is trying to. I think trying to, if anything, feel feel better about what he what, what's become of him, and being forced to be a uh, a pawn of his brother. As Claus says, it's hard to remember. You know, he he tries he tries to remember his friend Beast. And not think of it, not who Beast is now, but. Uh, Domino basically just said, you know, this is, he's the same, this is the person he's always been. He's needed the right combination of power and circumstance to bring that part of him fully to life. But, uh,. They, Quentin takes X Force uh, into yet another uh, point in the future, and that is where the issue ends. So this is definitely an interesting arc. Um, I, I I know I've mentioned this. I love the fact that both X Force and Wolverine are both dealing with a dealing with stories that feature Beast going in going evil. They're right, they're connected to one another, but different aspects of evil beast being an evil bastard. Moving on though to our next book we've got Bounty Hunters number 35. Where we left off uh, the crew of the Edgehawk minus a, a couple of members had uh, gone on to take on another job. Val Valance had uh, his memories erased by Inferno Squad and Inferno Squadron and was trying to piece together who he trying to Keep in mind who he was as a, as a person. So on uh, on the planet of Dasim in the Black Market District, uh, Tonga meets with uh, Kel at the Bounty Hunters Guild Social Club. Tonga's putting together an additional crew. The Claudite who which this includes a Claudite that uh, basically starts a massive bar fight so that uh, Tonga can choose who's in the crew. Those still standing end up in the crew. Dirge and Deathstick. Apparently though they're going after Boba Fett. Valance is trying to remember uh, But those who were important to it, those and just things, things that were important to him in general. But 
while he can remember faces like the face of the woman he loved. He can't remember how she smelled. But uh, and even Bosk is kind of sticking up for him a bit. Um, anyways, it turns out Black Sun has a uh, bounty out on Boba Fett, and uh, the crew the crew lands on the R Rishi Moon, and full frontal assault on uh, on Fett. Bosk wants some revenge, after all. Boba Fett did cut his, his feet off recently. But it turns out that the plan isn't to collect the bounty on Boba Fett, but rather to recruit him. And, uh... Fett uh, accepts the offer, but he wants to do something for him first. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting uh, arc, so interesting beginning of the new arc. Um, I'm glad, I'm honestly glad to see Boba Fett popping up in the Star Wars Bounty Hunter series. Even if it's just for this story arc. He is, after all, probably the most well known bounty hunter in all of Star Wars, so. It's only fitting he show up. Moving on, though, to our last book for the moment, we've got The Incredible Hulk, number one. So, uh, the Hulk annual from last month, I believe, had a preview of this. Um, this is new art, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, who wrote the first dozen, I think, dozen, dozen and a half issues of uh, Marvel's Alien series. So. But... Um, An archaeological dig in Iraq and Hunter finds a, uh, a bunch of uh, mummified monsters. And uh, the members of the group poking around, well, they, uh, they basically become the hosts of these uh, monsters. And they're free to roam as the green door is shut. Now, uh, Bruce Banner is traveling, trying to avoid the Hulk, the moment passing through uh, Still County, Kentucky. Pick up some sandwiches, continue on. But, uh, well, Hulk wants control, and Banner apparently backs out and comes to, having apparently uh, dislocated his arm. And, well, cops are facing him. Elsewhere, a young girl's working on a car with her best friend. Apparently, it's with her grandmother's. Um, said grandmother left the, car, left the car to her, but, well, her dad's been e using it. The girl and her friend, run, girl, Charlene, and her friend run off. Um, the archaeologists from the beginning show up to uh, deal with Banner, believing Banner to be one of them. Sending out one of the one of their own gets sent out. Um, as Charlene ends up getting rather close to uh, where Banner is. Apparently, Hulk wants full control, wants to be in control of the wants to be out all the time with Banner in the back of his mind. And overall Hulk also just wants to be left, left alone. But um, Charlene's dad catches up with her cra crashing the car and wrecking it. But um, Charlene 
beats out her dad a bit. Reveals rather, uh, rather painful looking uh, burn scar on the side of her face. She goes off into the woods, but the uh, the monster from earlier, well, takes on the form of Charlie's father. Also, the, the mother of monsters has re resurrected uh, Betty Ross. Or the mother of horrors, not monsters. Turns out that uh, the mother of horrors wants Bruce. And she, and the eldest, calls upon the other mom. Monsters of the world. The Moloids, Man Thing, seemingly even Ghost Rider. To bring about a new age of monsters. And that is where the issue ends. Interesting start. Um, doesn't see how everything plays out. Um, Give it, a, give it, give the book a shot. Like as I, I've stated previously, I've never, never been a huge Hulk fan, so. But I do like uh, Phil Kennedy Johnson. And, well, as I said, strong first issue, so. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, there's going to need to be uh, equally strong. Anyway, that is going to do it for now. Uh, huge thanks to Patreon patron Xander Lee. Thank you so much for your support. Um, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, Live long and rock hard.